Hi and welcome to our lesson on circular motion, speed, velocity and acceleration. In this lesson we're basically going to explore the relationship between the speed of an object moving in a circle and its period, which is the time it takes to move around that circle, and how speed also relates to velocity. Of course speed is a scalar, it has no direction, and velocity has a direction, so we expect speed to be constant for something moving around a circle, if it does indeed have a constant speed but velocity is always going to be changing. But first of all, let's look at the relationship between the speed and the period. Say I have a ball rolling around in a circle of radius 10 meters. And the ball is rolling around once every 30 seconds. So the period equals 30 seconds. That's how long it takes for this ball roll all the way around this circle and return to the start. Let's figure out if we want to find the speed at which this ball is rolling, which is given by v. Let's figure out the total distance this ball has to roll. So we know the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r. And in this case that's 2 times 10 multiplied by pi, or 20 pi. And that is the circumference of this circle, or delta d, the distance the ball has to roll. So we say that's delta d. And we know delta t, the time it takes to complete that distance, is 30 seconds, so delta t equals 30. And under this formula here, speed, which we'll give by a yellow v, speed and velocity are both given by v, so I'm going to color coordinate here and say if it's a v for speed it's yellow, and it's a, if it's a V for velocity, it's green. So we can say speed V is equal to delta D on delta T, and that's 20 pi on 30 seconds. That's also in units that's, uh, since it's in meters, it's 20 pi meters. So 20 pi meters on 30 seconds, that's 2 on 3 pi meters per second, or round about 2.09 meters per second. So for a ball to roll around the circumference of a circle with radius 10 meters in 30 seconds all the way, it has to travel at 2.09 meters per second. We just solved for a very specific example. Let's solve it more generally now. Say we have the, vol uh, the speed is equal to delta d on delta t. We know that delta t is equal to the period, which is given by big T, and delta d is equal to 2 pi r. So delta d on delta t becomes 2 pi r on the period. This is the general formula, formula that relates the speed to the period. And when we use circular motion formulae, we can basically choose whether we want to work in relationship in relation to the speed or the period in order to solve for forces and acceleration. So this formula here, not only did we use it here to find the velocity from the period, but we can even rearrange it to say 2 pi r on v equals the period. Let's see if that works. We had v was equal to 2 on 3 pi, so 2 pi, r in this case was 10, over the period 2 on 3 pi is equal to, divide everything by 2, divide the top and the bottom by pi, so we have 10 on 1 on 3, which equals 30 seconds. So it's very easy to exchange back and forth between the period and the velocity. Oh, sorry, the period and the speed and the speed. I was looking ahead. Now let's discuss velocity. So I'll delete this, draw a new circle, and title it Velocity velocity and constant speed. 
Let's pretend this is a Ferris wheel, which has carriages whoops, moving around, and the, the wheel is turning at a constant rate. Therefore, everyone should be moving on the edges at a constant speed. However, as I said at the start, speed is a scalar. It has no direction, but velocity does have direction. And there's a very big difference between, between someone moving with a velocity, say, one meter a second to the right, and a velocity of one meter a second directly down, and a velocity of one meter a second to the left, and one meter a second up. All these points here, we know that the carriage is moving at a constant speed, but since the direction in which it is moving is changing, we know the velocity must also be changing. And here's the key. If velocity is changing, and there's also a change in time in which that's happening, it takes time for the carriage to move from here to here, there must be some kind of acceleration going on. And if there's an acceleration, there must also be, oops, F equals M a. If, there, if something is accelerating, it must have a force being applied to it. So let's look now. We've discussed speed, period, and velocity. Let's jump ahead and talk a little bit about acceleration. Say we have, I'll try and sketch this in the best way. Where is it? Expand the circle. I want to draw a half circle here. That works. Say I have a car and it starts off up here and it's trying to turn a corner. We'll say it has a mass of 1000 kilograms and it starts off heading with this velocity 10 meters a second east. We'll draw a little compass here. North, east, south and west. And after it's finished turning, it's heading 10 meters a second south. And it's, uh, it's moving at 10 meters a second all throughout this, uh, this turn. I'll mark that in as a speed. Let's figure out the acceleration for this turn. We know that acceleration is delta v on delta t. And of course this delta v is a velocity because acceleration is also a vector. So we want to figure out the change in the velocity. So vf, the final velocity, is equal to 0 meters a second east and 10 meters a second south. And the initial velocity is equal to 10 meters a second east and 0 meters a second south. So delta V is equal to VF, take VI, which comes to, let's see, VF. VF is 0 meters a second east, VI is 10 meters a second east. So VF, take VI, is negative 10 meters a second in respect to the direction east. And then VF is 10 meters a second south, and VI is 0 meters a second south, so 10 takes 0 is 10 meters a second south. So this is the change in the easterly direction and the change in the southerly direction. And of course, if we divide delta V by delta T, we'll say in this case, delta T, it took 10 seconds to pull this turn. Then A, the acceleration, is equal to this divided by 10, so negative one meter a second squared east and one meter a second squared south. And we'll show, I'll show why this is important. I'll move this over here. We said velocity is a direction, velocity is a, a vector, so it has direction. Here it's in the easterly direction, here it's in the southerly direction. Acceleration, I said, is also a vector. Therefore, it must have direction too. Let's see what direction this acceleration is pointing. 
if we said this is the easterly direction and this is the southerly direction, then this must be the negative easterly direction. So the acceleration, say, of the car at here is equal to negative 1 metre a second squared east and also 1 metre per second squared south, this direction here. And these two vectors sum to give this. I'll draw it in... I'll draw it in blue. That is the direction of the acceleration. And if you'll notice, this car is turning along the outside of a circle. And we're finding that the direction of the acceleration... Well, the acceleration both needs to take away this velocity in the easterly direction, so it needs to be like that. And it needs to add velocity in the southerly direction, so it needs to be like that. And at all times, the acceleration is actually pointing towards the centre of this circle. So that's the key thing to take away from this lesson. Something moving around a circle at a constant speed has changing velocity. If it has changing velocity, it must have some kind of acceleration. And because of the way that object moves around the circle, the acceleration is always towards the centre of the circle. We'll look more at the real formulae for centripetal acceleration in the next video.